Could the current boom in the housing market be a ticking time bomb? And are we heading towards an inevitable crash in property values worldwide? The global real estate market is currently experiencing an unsustainable bubble, driving house prices to unprecedented levels that are increasingly unaffordable for most families. This concerning trend, warned by financial expert Jeremy Grantham, suggests that a decline in house prices worldwide may be inevitable. Jeremy Grantham, a billionaire investor from Wall Street, is known for accurately predicting past financial crises. Now he's warning that the current real estate market worldwide is in a much bigger bubble than before, surpassing the tech bubble and the 2007-2008 financial crisis. Grantham, co-founder and chief investment strategist of GMO, a firm with over $100 billion in assets, is raising serious concerns about the state of real estate markets globally. Grantham, described as a bubble historian, dismisses the idea of being overly eager for a soft landing in the face of economic bubbles. Instead, he accuses others of consistently expecting a gentle resolution, despite the Federal Reserve's historical failure to predict or manage such situations accurately. He highlights the global real estate bubble, stressing the drastic increase in house prices relative to family incomes in various regions such as China, Canada, and the UK. He also sympathizes with the time it takes for these situations to unfold, especially in real estate, a market especially known for its slow adjustments. Grantham gravely predicts a future shift from three to seven times mortgages, impacting housing affordability and market dynamics, while he acknowledges the instability of the current situation, where young individuals struggle to afford homes, bidding wars arise for available properties, and the traditional stability of housing prices becomes disrupted. Real estate trends defy short-term predictions and evolve gradually, and he anticipates a correction in housing prices ultimately driven by affordability constraints. Despite acknowledging the challenge issue of predicting the magnitude of the correction, Grantham contends that a decline in housing prices is inevitable. A straightforward method to assess home affordability involves comparing the annual income of an average household with the average price of a home. Using the example of Alex and Morgan, who collectively earn $60,000 per year, coincidentally the median household income in their city, the average home in their area costs $240,000. This results in a home price to median income ratio of 4, same to a PE ratio for stocks, indicating potential overvaluation in the housing market. As time passes, Alex and Morgan's income rises to $70,000 reflecting inflation and wage increases in their city. However, during the same period, the average home price skyrockets from $240,000 to $422,000, causing the ratio to increase to 6. This metric is crucial for assessing the ease or difficulty for first-time homebuyers to enter the market. Unlike existing homeowners looking to upgrade, first-time buyers lack the ability to leverage home appreciation and equity. Without financial assistance, their sole means of affording a home is through their income. A higher home price to income ratio indicates a greater financial strain on first-time buyers. The home price to income ratio in the U.S. has reached a historic high of nearly 7.5, surpassing pre-great financial crisis levels. And this underscores the increasing challenge for typical families to afford homes without stretching their finances. If we go way back to the end of World War II, we'll notice something interesting. After the war, in the decades right after World War II, the home price to income ratio was above six. Back then, a lot of men who returned from the war started working in construction, and there was a big construction boom in the US. This led to many new houses being built, making starter homes more available and affordable across the country. In the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, more women joined the workforce. Even though home prices were going up during these decades, it was still generally affordable for families. The reason was that families had more money coming in because more women were earning money outside of the home. But things started changing around the year 2000. The problem is that wages, the money people earn from their jobs, haven't been going up as fast as the cost of buying a home. This isn't just a problem in the US, it's happening in many other countries too. For example, in the UK, the ratio of home price to income recently went over 9. In Australia, it's even worse. The ratio is over 10.5. In big cities like Sydney, Australia, it's way higher at 16.8.
That means it would take an average person over 14 years just to save enough money to afford the down payment on a house. Canada is facing similar challenges. The price to income ratio in Canada is over 10. And in major cities like Victoria, Vancouver, and Toronto, it's even higher, over 16, 15, and 12 respectively. This situation isn't new. Throughout history, we've seen different countries experiencing real estate bubbles. In the late 1980s, for instance, Japan had a significant increase in home prices, reaching a ratio of 7.4 in 1989. In that same year, the United States ratio was only 3. Now, looking at Japan, we saw that home prices eventually came back down to normal. This is just one example, but throughout history, it's pretty common for real estate bubbles to pop up in certain countries and cities. What's different now is that for the first time ever, it seems like this potential real estate bubble is happening on a global scale. It's not just super high home prices causing trouble. The final blow to global home affordability has been the big increase in interest rates over the last 12 to 18 months. Let's use the United States as an example. In 2022, a whole 78% of home buyers used a loan to buy their homes. In 2021, it was even higher at 87%. Basically, about 8 out of every 10 buyers need a mortgage to buy a house. Because most buyers use loans, housing affordability is super dependent on interest rates. In the US, people often use a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. With this type of mortgage, the interest rate stays the same for the whole 30 years. In January 2021, the average interest rate on a 30-year mortgage was 2.65%. Since then, rates have been climbing and are now nearly 8%. You'd think that with higher rates, home prices would have come down a lot, right? Well, that hasn't really happened. At the beginning of 2021, the average home price in the US was $439,000. At that price, with a 2.65% interest rate on a 30-year mortgage and a 20% down payment, the monthly mortgage payment would be $1,320. Now, with the most recent data, that same average house would cost $495,000, which is about a 20% increase. But here's the tricky part. If we factor in the higher interest rate, with an 8% rate, the monthly mortgage payment shoots up to $2,996. Higher home prices and higher interest rates have made the monthly mortgage payment on the typical US home more than double in just a couple of years. This situation, according to Grantham, is not sustainable, and something's got to give. The big question, though, is when the real estate bubble will finally burst. Unlike the stock market, where things happen pretty quickly, the real estate market moves much slower. In the stock market, prices change almost instantly, and it's easy to buy and sell stocks. Real estate, on the other hand, is more challenging. It takes weeks or even months to agree on a price between the buyer and the seller. Plus, there are costs for brokers, agents, lawyers, and inspectors, making the whole process more complicated. All these factors mean it takes longer for real estate prices to adjust to new economic realities. Let's imagine a situation in your neighborhood to understand the point. Suppose one of your neighbors gets a new job and needs to move for work. They put their house on the market for $500,000, thinking it's a fair price based on similar sales last year. However, they don't consider that interest rates have gone up significantly in the past year, making it more expensive to use a loan to buy a house. The house sits on the market for a few weeks without much interest from buyers. Your neighbor decides to wait it out and keeps the price the same, believing a buyer will come eventually. On the other side, buyers are thinking the prices are too high given the current interest rates. This creates a mismatch between what sellers want and what buyers can afford. This situation is happening in the real estate market globally, leading to a significant drop in the number of real estate transactions, hitting a nearly two-decade low. Now let's revisit the story of your hypothetical neighbor. While waiting for their old house to sell, they decide to buy a new one closer to their new job, resulting in two mortgage payments each month. Eventually, they become a forced seller because they can't afford both payments. To sell the house, they lower the listing price and it finally sells. This example helps illustrate why it takes time for real estate prices to adjust lower after a shock to the market, like a slower economy or higher interest rates. In real life, when there's a shock to the real estate market, buyers try to wait it out. However, due to life events or financial distress, some homeowners become forced sellers, leading to a decline in real estate prices as they add inventory to the market. 
Looking back at history, home prices in the US peaked in the first quarter of 2007, but it took nearly five years for the real estate bubble to fully deflate by the end of 2011. The future remains uncertain, but one thing is clear. Either prices or interest rates need to come down for global home affordability to return to more normalized levels. If that doesn't happen, we might enter a period where home ownership becomes out of reach for many people worldwide. Lastly, it's important to stay informed about market trends and maintain a realistic budget aligned with your income and potential interest rate fluctuations. Assess the affordability of properties using the home price to income ratio, favoring options with lower ratios for better financial ease. Take a long-term perspective in your approach, exploring different neighborhoods and property types while avoiding rush decisions. Enhance your financial literacy, particularly understanding the impact of interest rates on mortgage payments. Build and maintain an emergency fund to handle unexpected homeownership expenses. Seek guidance from real estate professionals and financial advisors to make well-informed decisions. Patience is key in the real estate market, which moves more slowly than others, and being adaptable to changing conditions ensures a good approach to homeownership.